guys work here, welcome back to the bench. So, we just finished up taking the slide on our LCP2 apart. If you need to catch that video, go ahead and check that out up here. Now, the reason that we're not going over that in this one, even though I've got an LCP2 sitting here, is this is the actual reason for the project. So this video is going to be behind the project of the actual Duracoat itself. So why, you may ask, are we Duracoating an LCP2 slide? The reason is, because of this. Uh, Ruger's stock coating on these things is absolutely terrible. So what we need to do is we are going to get this torn down, we're going to clean up all of this corrosion, and we're going to refinish this thing with Duracoat's aerosol finishing kit. Um, this finishing kit is a gray wolf color, and the really cool things about this kit, uh, it's got two really cool parts. One, it's aerosol application, so it's just a spray paint can basically. The second cool thing about this is it is air cured, so we don't need an oven to be able to use this. This is a true DIY at home project. So the first thing we need to do is get this thing torn down. Again, if you need uh, tips on that, go ahead and check out up here. Going to pull back slightly, grab our little pick, yank our takedown pin out, and I'm actually going to put the takedown pin back in the frame for now. Set the frame aside. Let's go ahead and grab our spring and our barrel out. Let's get our firing pin taken out. Okay, pins out. Firing pin and spring are out. Now we need to get this uh, ejector out and I'm not sure how well this is gonna work this time around because yeah that's what I thought so unfortunately the ejector on this one is actually corroded into the slide a little bit so we're gonna need to do a little bit of cleanup before we can even get this ejector out so we're gonna grab a nice big tub here because we're gonna have to spray some stuff on here let's grab some gloves these are seven mil nitrile gloves nitrile is nice because typically speaking it is non-reactive Got a brush, and now let's figure out what the heck we're gonna put on here. So first things first, let's um, let's try some solvent on here. Um, this solvent's usually just used to clean up grime and stuff, but let's go ahead and spray some of that on here and see if we can get some of that just to penetrate down inside that a little bit to be able to ungum it up. And then I've got just a wire brush here that we're gonna clean up the top of this with. And again, I'm, I'm not really worried about the finish on this because uh, we're, <laughs> we're refinishing it anyway. I just need to break up that corrosion that's in there. Then I'm gonna take some brake cleaner. Woo. Okay. Oh, and that's great in an enclosed space. Blah. So some brake cleaner and stuff in there. Let's go ahead and see if we loosen that up at all. Oh, this thing is so foobarred. Okay, let's go ahead and grab a pick and see if we can get down in there a little bit to... Jeez. Try to penetrating oil. Okay, let's try this on for size. A little bit of PB Blaster. I'm not super excited about putting this uh, on a gun part, but um, at this rate, this thing, I don't think this thing's gonna fire because I'm relatively sure that a, yeah, it's, that extractor's not gonna be able to move enough to get around in there. So we need to get this thing, thing moving. So go ahead and toss some PB Blaster on there. Some good penetrating lube. Let that sit, let that kind of do its job. We're gonna be cleaning all of this up anyway. I mean, this whole thing is gonna get basically a nice big old bath. All right, guys, so uh, I'm just going to put a healthy amount on here, sit it in the bottom of here, just dump it. It on and we're gonna have to let this guy sit overnight hopefully the penetrating oil will do its job and next time we come down hopefully I can get that extractor off because I really need that thing off uh, it's not gonna work anyway so I'll see you in like two seconds all right guys it's actually an hour or so later rather than another day uh, we're gonna go ahead and give this a shot because oh that stinks because I'm impatient and I want this done Jeez. Need paper towel. Be right back. Let's go ahead and pull this out for a sec. Alright guys, so we are going to try some heat on this thing. I can't find my torch right now, so we're just going to try to heat the Everlong crud out of it with the heat gun and see if that makes any difference at all. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. Be super careful now. Not. guess it's back to the PB blaster. Alright guys, so it is the next day. We are going to give this a shot before we go on to something that is probably a little bit stronger of an option. So it's been soaking in PB Blaster all night trying to get this thing worked up. Um, let's go ahead and grab pliers here and see if we can get this thing worked out. Oh man, and it is still 
frozen. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to essentially make our own penetrating lubricant. Um, that lubricant is going to be made up of automatic transmission fluid, acetone, and a little bit of kerosene. I, uh, I went to the internet for a little bit of help with this because I am just not sure where to go uh, with this now to get this fixed. So we're gonna make some of our own penetrating lube and see if that works, see if we can get that down in here. Uh, we're gonna use a glass jar so that the acetone doesn't eat it. We're gonna sit this in the glass jar and uh, just give it a while and see what happens. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, here is the acetone. And we need equal parts of all three of these, uh, which is gonna work out great because I've got 50, 100, and 150 milliliter graduations on here. So let's go ahead and fill this up to 50. Now the reason that I'm using glass is because acetone tends to eat stuff. We're gonna use some automatic transmission fluid. This is some just random stuff I still had in my garage. So let's go ahead and dump that in to that point and I'll be right back for the uh, oh man that is not mixing well, this is gonna be interesting let me go grab the kerosene I gotta take this over to the kerosene so there we are that is acetone automatic transmission fluid and kerosene and let's go ahead and sit our slide in there and hope something happens be back in just a little bit to see if it worked all right guys so it's been not too long it's only been like 20 minutes or so but I've got the time so I'm gonna see if this worked I can almost guarantee it has not worked <laughs> But we're going to go ahead and give it a shot because, as I said, I've got the time. Um, so we're going to go ahead and pull it out of here and see if this has loosened it up at all. Does not seem to have. Let's, let's do some tapping on it just to see if we can force it to loosen up a little bit. It's just digging into the end of my darn... Oh, wait. It is moving. Okay, so that's a good sign. So maybe, although I think maybe this detent here is getting chewed up because it is not under any spring tension. It's just kind of, it's kind of flopping around at this point. I don't know if you can see that. So not under any spring tension. Uh, in addition to that, there's a little bit of goo schmoo on there. Let's go ahead and keep. Great if I could get this thing out of here. Even if I might have to order pieces, fine with ordering pieces and getting a new one. I want it out. What are they? Just not 100% sure how to get this thing out of here. Oh, it's so close. Got it. All right, the extractor is out. Now the unfortunate part is I've still got that pin down there, but that is significantly further than we were. So let's go ahead and let's dip it back in here really quick. Get some more of that lube down in that hole. Um, we did not eat up our extractor too bad, so that's good. So we may be able to get this thing out with some heat. Let's go ahead and try some tweaking first. So right now I'm just trying to get this thing loosened up by moving it around in that channel a little bit. You can see here, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this, oh, you see that right there? That corrosion? That, and then the corrosion that's keeping this down in this hole are what has been keeping this thing from coming apart. Um, I'm really, I'm, I'm really let down with Ruger on this, like this is really bad coating guys. Let me go ahead and do a little bit of buffing on here to see if I can get this rust off of here with just some scotch bright. Yep, it's coming off. I mean, not easily, but it's gonna take some rubbing. It's taking the finish off too, but that's all right. We don't care about the finish. That's funny. You can see the, uh, you can see how bad their surface finish is when you start really rubbing away, getting down into the, the nasty underneath. They end up having to take a Dremel to this portion of it. There is a lot of surface rust right here that has to be off before we coat it. We're gonna end up doing this to the whole thing, trying to get it all cleaned up and polished up. Okay, well, let's go ahead and stick this back in the acetone. Off to wait again. Okay, guys, so it is the evening now. Um, I've... <laughs> To be honest, I've been down here a couple of times pounding and banging on this thing and it is, it's not worked yet. Um, it is still stuck in there and it's not making a whole lot of headway here. So we are going to hit this with some heat and try to, try to get the metal to expand enough to release that so that it comes out. Um, it may, it may pop out, it may go flying. I'm not 100% sure, but got to do something here. So I'm going to go ahead and get this on something so I don't have to hold it and let's heat it up. <laughs> Nothing. It's hot. No, 
out smells like a burnt transmission in my basement. the detent and it is a just nasty mess and let's see if we can get the spring out of here everywhere there we go ha ha gotcha mother trucker so you can see why that was so bad I think we're gonna have to get a new spring I think I can get this plunger cleaned up enough but uh, that spring is gonna have to be replaced it is a just heaping pile of just s and gunk uh let's go ahead and grab get all this stuff set aside grab our tub back over here and let's get some get some gunk cleaned up now go ahead and get a little bit of stuff cleaned off of here because this thing is some nasty shape this is going to take some sandpaper up here because you can see you can see that pitting in there so that's all going to have to come off and then i'm going to try to blend everything scratch this coating up as much as i possibly can so the new coating sticks really well so we'll get this thing cleaned up like that we will figure out a way to get down in here i don't know if i'm going to be able to get this down in there not actually as bad as I thought it was going to be. I think the majority of the damage is actually in the uh, spring itself. I think the spring was the problem. Might as well just go ahead and start scuffing. Now I do have two other slides beyond this one to prep and coat with this. So this is the only one that I will actually be showing you. The other ones I'm going to do off camera because they are significantly easier but don't hold any additional steps to this one. It's another LCP slide and then a LC9 slide. All Rugers because they're crappy coating after we get everything nice and brushed. They do, um, they include this in the kit. This stuff. They include this in the kit but I went ahead and got my own because I knew that I was going to be doing a significant number of these. So now we will be taping off the insides here that we don't end up coating any of that. I'm not going to tape the bottom of this rail. I'm going to end up coating it and then I'll just smooth it out with some thousand grit wet sand. So with this we don't really have to get this coating off of here. We just want to make sure that it's scuffed up and bare enough to the point where the uh, Duracoat is going to stick to it and it really isn't going to take a whole lot from what I understand. Uh, that Duracoat sticks pretty well but surface prep is going to be a gigantic part of how successful this coat job actually is. So we want to make sure that we are as prepped as we can get which means textured surface okay so I think that we've got it pretty much cleaned off now um, I've scrubbed a whole lot with the scotch bright pad point is to get the texture at this point we're just getting the texture necessary that we need for finishing the texture is gonna be slightly rough it is not it's not like gonna be a polished part or anything because we need that new coating to be able to stick to it so we're getting it slightly roughed I think we've got the scotch bright pretty much used up but we still have a bit of that surface rust here. So we're gonna grab some sandpaper. I'm gonna grab Thousand Grit first. So I know Thousand Grit is a um, pretty kind paper. Uh, it's forgiving, doesn't remove a lot of material, which is what I want. I don't wanna remove a lot of material. I just need to get rid of that pitting. So let's go ahead and grab some Thousand Grit and see how far we can get with this. See if this even touches it we got to get rid of the pitting then we got to come back in and scotch bright it again to get our proper surface prep and it's still not perfect but it's better that is about as good as we're gonna get on this so uh, let me get the other two slides prepped to this point and then I'll show you how to uh, tape up degrease and do final prep and we'll start spraying okay guys so I didn't uh, I didn't do a very good job of recording this last uh, little bit of what I did. Um, all I did was I got everything cleaned off. The old finish is now gone. Uh, all we are left with is a kind of matte finish that you get when you rub the crap out of it with that Brillo pad. And then I went and I taped up all the surfaces that I do not want coated. Um, I'm fine with some of these getting coated. Uh, this bottom, these rails, I'm fine with. I don't want any of this under stuff getting coated. And then I affixed a, uh, a stick here <laughs> to be able to hold it on so I can rotate it around and I can get good coverage. Uh, and then on this end of the stick, I've got a notch and uh, I've got wires in my box that you're gonna see here in just a minute. And that notch is gonna hang on those wires so that I can hang this up and have it just suspended and in a nice good place to dry. Uh, but I'll be doing all the spraying by hand um, with it on the end of this. So I'll be able to 
spray it and move it around. Now we do still need to do our last clean off of this. Uh, if you notice, I've touched it a couple of times. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go ahead and bust open the Duracoat um, kit. Now I've not gotten into the kit yet, but the reason I haven't really gotten into the kit is just so that I can, because uh, I'm, I'm doing most of this stuff with just the stuff that I have, and you don't have to buy this kit. But if you do, it does come with that Brillo pad as well as a cleaner, and we are, so we're not going to end up using this Brillo pad because that's nowhere near the amount that we needed. I went through like two of those things, uh, but I did also do three guns, which you'll, you'll see here in a minute as I end up cleaning and coating. This is our Duracoat itself. We got Wolf Gray, and this is the next part of the process that we're actually going to be using. We're going to be using the True Strip from them. Uh, I'm going to be spraying this onto some cotton pads and wiping down our slides. And what we're doing with this, since we've already got everything cleaned up and stripped off, all we're doing with this is degreasing, essentially. We're getting that last bits of grease off. Uh, after I clean them off, I will not be touching them again. Uh, and I will be wearing gloves for the majority of this. I've been wearing gloves most of the time anyway. That's just to keep stuff off my hands. Now we're switching over to wear gloves so that we're not getting any grease on the slides themselves because the prep of these things is the top thing that is going to make this a good coating. So let's go ahead and grab our gloves. So what I'm going to do is one at a time, we're going to clean these slides off and then we're going to go back and we're going to hang them up. After I get everything hung up, I'll go ahead and show you guys how I've got everything hung up and then we will start spraying and we'll go uh, go through the spray process here in just a second. So first of all, let's go ahead and read the instructions on this. So this does not have a shake time on it, but I am going to shake it anyway. It's got a ball in there, so let's just make sure that's all nice and mixed up before we start doing this. Now the reason I'm not going to spray it directly on here is because I've got that tape. Uh, we've already done a bunch of cleaning on these things. These have been cleaned with acetone, they've been cleaned with brake cleaner, and now we're just uh, we're using this to try to get the last bits off because I've touched them a little bit. So I'm just going to be spraying it on, there we go, spraying it on this cotton pad. Oh! Sniffing it. Shoo! And then I'll we'll just be rubbing it on here, getting rid of the last bits of grease and oil. You can see that that's not, it's really not that dirty for what all I've done to this thing. So we just want to make sure that we're getting all those last bits of oil and grease and grime and any little particles that may be on there. We want all of that out before we coat this thing. Hey, that one is done. Let's go ahead and grab our other two and then we'll go over and I'll show you guys what we're looking at as far as where I'm coating this stuff goes because you guys are going to laugh at this. Okay guys, so welcome to my basement. <laughs> um, so you're supposed to be doing this outside in a well-ventilated area. Um, it, it is like 20 degrees outside. I don't have a heated garage. Um, so this would be really bad to do outside. It would just, the coating would turn to crap and you're talking a complete waste of time. It would never dry. Um, so we're doing it here. Uh, so, so here's what we've got to do. So we've got our can here. We've got to shake this for three minutes then we're going to pull this red top out of it. We're going to put that in this in the bottom, push down and it's going to pop. And when it, that pops, it's actually got a uh, an internal cylinder of hardener in here and that's going to release the hardener. We're going to shake for three more minutes and then we're going to start going to town. So when we go to town, what we're, so when we start spraying, what we're going to do is we're going to do very thin coats. That's kind of a rule of thumb with spraying things, especially with spray paint and like how incredibly inefficient these spray cans are and stuff. You want to do the thinnest coats possible because it's better to get multiple thin coats with complete coverage than singular, very heavy coats. So we're going to put on thin coats. We're going to put one thin coat on. Uh, we're going to put do one of each on each one and hang it back up. Then we're going to flash dry it. We're going to flash it with, I've got a heat gun. We're going to have it on low because we don't want a whole lot of heat. We want to get that preliminary coating and all the solvents in that off before we lay another coating on on top of that. So we're going to flash it and we're going to spray again. We're gonna flash it and spray again. We'll probably do that about four times to get a complete, really nice coverage on it. Um, so first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and pop that top off, get that to the side, get our red dot pulled off. Then I'm gonna shake this, before putting the dot in, I'm gonna shake this for three minutes. So here we go. It sounds like there's like gravel in this. Longest three minutes of my life. Makes me really happy I don't last three minutes. Mm, too far? Too far. Okay, I'm calling it three minutes. Now, let's go ahead and put this guy on here. So we're gonna sit it on there just like that. 
think it went. Nope, there it goes. So it just popped. Should release all of the hardener up in there. Now we've got to shake for another three minutes. Okay, so that is done. We are all shaken up now. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a couple of spray shots on the back here. Just kind of check, make sure that we're, uh, it seems like we're all mixed up. And look what the color is, because honestly, I have no idea what color this is. Um, I asked her a coat for a gray, and they were like, hey, all right, how about this one? So I'm like, okay. Oh, whew, that's a lot darker than I thought it was gonna be. That makes me excited. I was worried it was gonna be like this like weird white gray. So I'm super pumped now. Oh, it actually smells really good. This may not be as bad as I thought. I may be getting high in like some joyous fumes rather than like disgusting ones. Okay, so anyway, so now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull our first slide down and let's get some coats on here. down. Go ahead and move on to the next. Okay. No, it definitely smells bad. Whew. Last one, the LC9. All right. So there's our first set of coats. Um, go ahead and grab our heat gun and we'll flash these things off. Let's pull down this one. So I've got them flashed off. Um, you can see the coating is, I mean, it's okay. It's a little bit blotchy in some places, but it's the first coat. And I will say the spray that comes out of here is, well, now it's all gummed up. It, it's not a very clean um, spray pattern. Like the spray pattern isn't very good. So it's really difficult to get it um, consistent so far. Okay. Let's do another one. coverage is getting significantly better now. Uh, it's starting to look like an actual coated part now. It's still nice and thin there. Now, the reason I can tell it's nice and thin, I don't know if you can see it on the camera right up here. You can still see the LCP etched emblem. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I was a little worried I was gonna lose that. Do at least one more coating per. This is really starting to stink down here. Let's flash them again. Okay, so I think I'm done. I'm starting to lose a little bit of the definition in here now. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop at this many coats. Uh, I've put three coats on. I think I put them on a little bit heavier than they did in like the other videos. But I'll tell you that spray can is really difficult to control. So we're gonna stop there, I think. We are gonna give this an hour now to sit. Uh, and after that hour is done, I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna pull the tape off and get all those surfaces clean. Uh, because after an hour, it's it's okay to handle. So I'm gonna pull the tape off while it's still somewhat ductile so I don't like chip anything while I'm pulling tape off. and we are done coating. Um, I don't think there's anything else that I wanna use this stuff for. Go ahead and let these sit for an hour and then we'll come back down, we'll pull them off and I'll meet you over at the bench and we'll go ahead and pull the tape off and see how the taping worked. All right guys, so we are all finished up with coating. Uh, it has been sitting for an hour now. Uh, that is the amount of time that is required until you can actually handle them and as you see, they are 
really nice and clean. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull the tape off. Now I want to get the tape off before it fully cures because I don't want to be pulling the tape and like cracking the, the finish as I'm pulling it off. But um, that is all I'm going to do for right now because to be honest, um, it's like 1130 at night. I'm exhausted and I'm relatively sure that I'm high from spraying all those things earlier. So we're just going to pull the tape off right now and then we'll come back in just a second to give you the rundown of what I thought of the whole process. So first things first, I'm going to get this dowel rod out. Hopefully, we'll see if this works. I uh, hadn't really gone over how I was going to get this dowel rod out yet. So we'll see what I can pull off here. There we go. Tape off. Should be able to just pull the dowel rod out. So there's one dowel rod. Let's go ahead and start pulling tape off. There we go. little over spray in there but not too bad oh, none in there so that's good pull our firing pin channel tape out off the breech face here. I taped up the breech face because that's a relatively tight area and I didn't really want to mess around with any of the tolerances in there. There we go. Oh. You can see that the Duracoat is already making it a little bit more difficult to get this tape off this side out. Tape is off and that thing looks good if I do say so myself. You can still see, I'm not sure if you'll be able to catch it in here, but there you go, right here, you can still see the markings, so that's pretty cool. All right, guys, I got the tape off, got those hanging back up so the Duracoat can cure, giving us that entire hardness that we're actually looking for. So I'll be back in just a few minutes. We're gonna go over the assembly process, see if we have to clean up any of the surfaces or see if our coating was thin enough that we didn't have to really worry about it and go over our final thoughts. See you in a sec. Okay, guys, so we have everything finished up. Everything is coated. All of the tape is off. Uh, it came off really smoothly and it didn't uh, didn't tear or anything. And you can see that the finishing on this is just, I am really impressed. Um, I put on three coats. We got 100% coverage, but it's light enough you can still see the laser etching in here, which is just awesome as far as I'm concerned. Now, here is where the majority of our corrosion was. And you can see that it's, it was bad enough to be able to take away the etching here a little bit, um, but you can still see it for the most part. And everything else just ended up really nice and, uh, and clean. Now, if you guys remember, we had some pretty nasty corrosion uh, down inside here. Now, we've cleaned up all the rust. Um, while, we're, while we're putting everything back together, we're going to drop a drop of break-free break CLP down in that hole. Um, now, the reason that we're doing this is, per our testing, Break Free and uh, Slip 2000 were the two oils that prevented corrosion the best. So, we're going to drop that down in there just to get some final corrosion resistance down in that uh, in that hole. And now, let's go ahead and put everything back together. Now, at this point, I really need to commend Ruger on, on their customer service because... So, this thing had some nasty corrosion. So, I gave Ruger a call. And not only did Ruger... I mean, they... I mean, really... They straight up offered to re-blue this thing and take care of all the internal components, but I didn't want it re-blued. So instead, um, they sent me parts. They sent me um, a new extractor and a new plunger and spring. So we have new Ruger parts to be able to put in this thing. They replaced these under warranty and all it took was a phone call. Now here, I have my LCP, which you'll notice has rounds in. So that can only mean one thing. This has been fired. Um, I took this and the LC9 out already. I was waiting on the parts for the uh, second LCP, so it has yet to go through testing. But as far as durability of this coating goes, thus far this thing's had 50 rounds through it. Not a whole lot, but I was just verifying that it was gonna function again after the coating, and everything functioned exactly like it did before. Everything is the exact same smoothness that it was before. There's no chips in the coating. Uh, everything has worn really well. Same thing goes with the LC9. And overall, I am really happy with this coating, especially for what it gives you. Um, so all in all, this kit sells for, I believe, around $50 to $55 for 
the coating and the cleaner that we got. Um, just the coating itself costs, I think, around $35. So if you've got all the other stuff, acetone, brake cleaner, and all that stuff, and you want to take care of cleaning yourself, it's only going to cost you about $35. Bucks. Um, a little bit of time and letting these things cure. And now I've got a really nice coating for, you know, half of what it cost me to Duracoat one gun and I've got three guns done with this stuff. The finished product, it's not quite as nice as Duracoat. Um, I can see a little bit of kind of the orange peel texture on there. That may have just been the thickness of coatings that I was laying down. Uh, I would like an opportunity to try these out a little bit more but I currently don't have anything else on my project queue and that can that I used for this project is pretty much toast. But all in all, I am very happy with this. Um, I will be doing future projects later on with Duracoat and I'll give you guys updates with this as we go along and kind of see how this coating wears. But that is how you do at home gun refinishing and restoration on something that's got a little bit of rust on it and just needs some TLC to get back up and running. That's it for this time guys. I really hope you appreciate this um, and I really appreciate Duracoat for sending us that coating so that we can do this project and bring this information to you. Remember if you found the video useful go ahead and like and subscribe down below. Do me a favor if you've got anybody that's looking into doing Duracoat share this video with them. Let them know kind of what to expect what some of the steps are and tell them that the preparation is key because without proper preparation their coding is not going to be durable remember guys i appreciate every one of you and until next time do your research get informed and get to work yeah.